Welcome back to the lab. I'm Dr. Scott Diabolical Evil Genius and today we're going to be installing a series 30 torque converter on a Predator 212 cc engine. This engine was purchased from Harbor Freight and it is Harbor Freight item number 69730. This is the wedge head or the non-hemi engine. Before we get started installing, let's just take a look at the engine. One of the easy ways to recognize the non-hemi engine is by the starter cover vent holes. There are three and a total of five. Second way is to look at the valve cover assembly. It's just stamped steel. Turn the engine around now. Looking at the back side of the engine, we do have these two oil fill plugs that are orange colored. We will have to pay attention to those because they can cause an interference depending on what orientation they are in. If you look at it in profile, you'll see the plug actually flares outward and is slightly larger than the diameter of the casting. If the plug is in this orientation, it's going to cause an interference. Some people have had to grind down one of these edges to get the plate to fit. I was lucky enough to orient this back one here about an eighth of a turn off of where it normally seats. And that was enough clearance to allow me to mount the plate. And we'll see that in a few minutes. This engine does have four mounting holes on a mounting pad. These are all tapped SAE and they are all fine thread. I believe they're tapped quarter 24, but I'm not going to swear to it. Crankshaft is also tapped and it is also SAE fine thread. This is a three quarter inch diameter shaft and it does take a standard quarter inch keyway. Okay, let's get started installing. I have the engine sitting up a bit on a wooden block because we are going to need a little bit of clearance here. When I purchased my kit, first item that was in there is the aluminum mounting plate. It does have ball bearings on either side and there is a sleeve between the two ball bearings that keeps the two from crushing inward. These ball bearings are slightly different sizes. The inner races on the back are slightly larger than the inner race on the front. And I'll show you why that's important. If we take a look at our driven shaft here, you'll notice it does have a very slight step down right here. The back side of it just has a circlip on it. The other side is threaded and it's also slotted. Now we're going to insert that. Threaded end, which is a small end first, through the back of the plate and you'll see it is loose in this bearing, but as we insert it and we come up on the step, it does become a press fit. Let's go ahead and press it in now. It's just a little tight, goes about this far and then stops. We're just going to give it a very light tap with a hammer. There's no need to bash on this. Okay, that's just enough to seat the shaft against the bearing race with the circlip. Next, we're going to mount the plate to the engine. We do have two different bolt circles, and each bolt circle has three different positions for the four mounting holes. You'll have to choose the one that works best for your application. For mine, since this is just a test at this point, I've gone ahead and marked out the center location of the inside bolt circle. Now the plate mounts to the engine using fine threaded cap screws which are supplied in the kit and these do have both a flat washer and a lock washer. I've coated mine with anti-seize which is a very good idea since these are steel bolts going into an aluminum casting. The anti-seize will keep these from seizing up and binding 
And should we need to take this apart in the future, it might prevent us from having to deal with a snapped off bolt. So we'll start by just lining this up here. And I'm just going to start this one. We want to make sure as we're aligning the plate that it lines up and rests flat against the mounting plate on the back of the engine. That's very important. Right now mine doesn't. I've got an interference someplace and it turns out it's this wooden block we're sitting on top of. Okay. So now we can see I'm sitting flush and flat. That's what we're looking for. Put in the remainder of the bolts. When you install these bolts, you want to install them finger tight. And you want to install them with your fingers first. Do not use a wrench to install the bolts. Wrenches are for tightening things. If you tighten one bolt down first, you may not be able to get the others to line up in the holes. We're just going to work the plate and make sure that we are flush and we're not hitting anything on the back side. Again, I did move that oil fill plug just a little bit so that we would clear it. Okay, that feels good. Now there's not a torque spec listed for these bolts in the instructions, but we'll go ahead and run them down to a medium torque. I'm gonna set my torque wrench at 20 pounds. And as we torque these, we want to go in flights. That means we want to do all of the bolts and come back and then tighten them a little more. Then we'll come back and tighten all four just a little bit more until we reach our final torque. What that does is it draws our plate down against the engine evenly. It prevents us from warping the plate by drawing down on one bolt too tight while the other bolts are loose. Since we have four bolts, we'll go in a cross pattern. We'll be listening for the click. There it is. One, two, Three, and four. We'll check it one more time. One, two, three, four. That's installed. Next, we're going to install the driven assembly. Since this is a keyed shaft, first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our shaft key. This one's pretty loose. Usually, these are just a very light press fit. Next is going to be our drive sprocket. My kit did include two. It included a 12 tooth number 35 chain sprocket which looks like this, and a number 40 chain tin tooth sprocket. Since Smog uses number 40 chain, we're going to install this one. And it just slides on. Next we're going to install the driven pulley. That's this large assembly with the red spring in it. If you look at it on edge, you'll see this side is nearly flat. It's actually a two and a half degree angle. The outside of it is an 18 and a half degree angle. We want the flatter of the two to be on the engine side with the spring side facing outward. The center of this is keyed. So we're just going to line up on the key and insert that. Next is the flat washer. And then finally the nut. This nut is 15 sixteenths and it is called a nylock nut. You'll notice it has this blue nylon insert inside of it. Nylock nuts are fairly common. They're designed to lock themselves. Let's 
spin that on. Now there's no need to use an impact wrench here. Just because the nut is large does not mean that it requires a lot of torque. What I'm going to do is insert a screwdriver through the clutch here, being very careful to avoid the spring. That's going to prevent the unit from rotating. We did not get a torque spec for this nut, so I'm going to apply 30 foot-pounds. That should be sufficient. Seems to be okay in testing when I ran the motor earlier. If it needs more, we can always add more later, but it would be better to not overstress the part if we don't have to. Keep in mind, the opposite side of this nut that's holding the clamping force is nothing more than that little circlip. If you over torque the nut with an impact wrench, you stand a very strong chance of damaging or completely destroying that circlip and possibly the groove it goes in. Okay, let's install the drive side now. First is this bushing, this acts as a spacer. Next, we're going to check our clearance. This is the inside of the drive pulley. Again, it's nearly flat. It's a two and a half degree angle. And it does have this flange on this side of it. We want to make sure the flange faces the engine. We want the smooth side to be facing out. This does have its own key built in. Now I do have enough clearance between the back side of the pulley and the bolts. I'm not hitting them. Let's check the alignment with the driven pulley. These two pulleys do need to align correctly so that they don't shred the belt. The belt should not be running at an angle at any time. We're just going to measure this with a straight edge. And I am uh, way off. Okay, let's add some shims. Let's start with the washer that was included in the kit. And we'll check again. We'll set our straight edge flat against the pulley. Still not enough. So I'm going to dig into my parts bin and pull out a three quarter inch washer. This one is 123 ten thousandths, 12.3 thousandths. As you can see, it's not really a proper fit for a machine. We're just going to use it as a spacer temporarily to see if it will align our pulleys. And probably I will machine a bushing of the correct diameter and thickness and fit to go back in here once this assembly is complete and we've determined exactly what our spacing is going to be. If you don't have a lathe like I do, well, the best bet is to just shim it up with washers and try various combinations until you get the proper fit. Okay, that's what we're looking for. I'm going to turn the engine a bit here so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. Place our straight edge against our driving pulley and look at the alignment to our driven pulley. This is the driver, this is the driven. And you can see now we have the proper clearance. Next in the assembly will be our bronze bushing. That's just a slip fit. And then the clover leaf drive. The clover leaf is asymmetrical. On the inside, it just has this broken edge. The outside has two flats and a slight flange. We want the flats and the flange to be facing outward. This one also has a key built in, so we'll line up there. Now we'll take the outside of our driver pulley. This is the 18 and a half degree side and we'll slip fit it onto the clover leaf. And it should slide back and forth and it does. Next is going to be our pulley cover. The pulley cover has flats that are cut into it and it has a flange. We want the flange to go over the pulley and we want to align on the flats 
onto the clover leaf. Next is the machine spacer. This also has a keyway cut into it. Line up there. And then we'll put in our bolt. Now in my kit, it did include both a flat washer and a lock washer. And this is a stainless steel fine thread bolt. Stainless steel has a tendency to gall in just about anything that you install it into. Iron, steel, especially aluminum and the non-ferrous metals. So I have coated it generously with anti-seize. And that should help us out in the future. We're just going to saw this finger tight. Give everything a shake and make sure that everything is being aligned correctly. Okay, that all feels good. Now this is the one bolt in my kit that did come with a torque spec. And the instructions spec 26 to 30 foot-pounds. So we're going to set up our torque wrench to 26 foot-pounds, which is in the range. And then we're going to torque it down. We'll unscrew the nut at the bottom. And we'll take our reading. These are individual pounds, and then we have these in 10 pound increments. We're currently at 20. We're going to turn the wrench until it reads 26. That looks good. Now, we have a slight problem. We have no way to hold the crankshaft. And even though we are picking up a little bit of tension here, that's only coming from compression. So here's my trick. Pull up on the starter rope. Hold this in your hand and take up the slack. As you turn the torque wrench, you'll be able to feel it pulling down on your toggle. We are turning the engine backwards and we're tracking the starter downwards into its housing. When the toggle handle reaches the end of the housing, with the starter still engaged, it'll hold the crankshaft just enough for us to torque this down. Again, no need to use an impact wrench. We are not building A-Bomb's Swedish meatball press. One more ought to do it. Okay, we're there. Now, we've made a very large mistake because if we had read the instructions first, we would have noticed that it said to install the belt before installing the outer pulley group. Otherwise, there's no way to get the belt on properly. The instructions clearly say, never pry the belt on, you'll destroy the belt. So, let's unscrew up. Now to remove this, we'll have to get a little clever. This might be the one case where you would use an impact wrench and only because it can supply enough torque as a hammer force to break this nut loose without actually having to hold it on. I'm gonna have to use my very special spanner wrench. The reason the spanner wrench is special is because it was built in the shops at Petroleum Helicopters in Lafayette, Louisiana on March the 17th, 1971. It was purchased by my father on that day. The wrench is intended to remove the exhaust nuts on a Model 47 Bell helicopter. Okay, torque's coming off. And that's it. Sometimes you just need the proper tool. So let's remove the bolt. Spacer group and the cover and the outside of the pulley and the clover leaf. And we'll get the belt. Now when installing the belt, you'll need to pay attention to how you install it. The belt is asymmetrical, meaning that on one side it is completely flat cut and on the other side, it has a beveled angle. 
I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. This is the beveled side. This is the flat side. We want the bevel side to face outward. Okay, our belt is installed, our bevel is to the outside. Let's repeat the assembly process. Cloverleaf keys in, our drive pulley aligns onto our cloverleaf, our cover aligns onto our flats, and our spacer aligns with the keyway, and we finger tighten our bolt. Give it a good shake, make sure that everything is seating correctly and everything's properly aligned. Now before we go torquing this down again and making a second mistake, let's take a look and check our alignment. This is what we're looking for. You can see our belt now has a very straight shot here. It's not cocked to one side or the other by a significant amount. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's go ahead and cork it down. Okay, again, torque wrench is set to 26 foot pounds. Run the nut snug. Pull up on the handle. Hold the handle under tension. Use the wrench to wind the rope back down into the starter until it tightens. Make sure it stays engaged. Now torque the bolt. There we go. Okay. Crankshaft spins freely as it should. Belt is in place. We're torqued down. Our alignment is correct. And we'll spin you around and show you what it looks like from this side. This is what the alignment should look like from the front. Nice and straight. No interference behind, not hitting any of the bolts, not gonna grind on anything. Check our chain clearance. Chain's gonna run in this groove here. And once we have the number 40 chain, we'll have to check to make sure that we have enough clearance in between here. It may be necessary in the future to put in an additional spacer here to gain enough clearance for the chain. And if we do, we'll have to put in a corresponding spacer on our drive side so that our pulleys stay aligned. And one final check. There's our oil fill plug back there and it is doing its thing. The oil fill plugs on this motor are sealed with an O-ring. So you can be not completely tight and it'll still seal up. I've been running this motor about 40 minutes in testing and it seems to be fine. Okay, so we've got the engine and the torque converter all mounted up. Let's go temporarily install this, start up the engine and see how it looks.
We're back in the lab now. And it seems that everything is working correctly. All of our alignments still look good and our clutches were functioning correctly. One of the things I wanted to mention that nobody else seems to comment on in any of the install videos, nor in any of the comments that I've read anywhere, are the actual ratios that you get out of a Series 30 converter. According to the instructions that were included in my kit, which appear to be Xerox copies of Comet's instructions, the original designer of this particular unit, the low gear ratio is listed as 2.7 to 1, meaning that the crankshaft will rotate 2.7 times for every time the drive shaft rotates. On the high end, it's listed at 0.90 to 1, meaning a 10% overdrive. You want to keep that in mind. The range is 2.7 to 1 to 0.90 to 1. You'll need to know that when selecting the chain and sprocket combination that are going to work best for your application.